that we don't have a lot of information. Uh, can you tell us uh, what sort of album it is and uh, uh, the, the conception, the making of this album? Uh, yeah. You can tell everything you want about uh, that mystery, uh, mystery album, in fact. Mystery. Yeah, we don't know anything about it. <laughs> we know that it's in preparation, but yeah, we don't know anything about it. Yes, um, I think um, we have most of the material is written. We still write, um, we work on the lyrics at the moment very intensely. And uh, yeah, we already recorded some pre production for it. Um, style, I mean, it sounds like the band sounds in 2022. Mm -hmm. So, no reference to the past? Of course, it's the uh, same people who write the music and mm -hmm. um, that's the reference. But, I mean, all the albums sound different anyway. Like, R.I.P. and Brain is to totally different. So, it's not possible with uh, in our age to, to, to write the same material as when we have been like in our 20s, it's just not possible. So I think for me it sounds way more mature, more like of, on the feeling side of the whole thing. Of course it's gonna uh, be like very technical and stuff. The, yeah, the common point uh, between all the Corona albums is time signatures. Is yes. it something that comes naturally or is it something that you do like yes. a game? No, it comes totally naturally mm -hmm. for me. It's, um, and I think um, I, I like it most if it if it's it's if it's like up time, but it still has a groove to it. Mm -hmm. You know, with a lot of stuff I hear, it's very complex. Very mm -hmm. um, the idea comes from the brain, not from the stomach. You mm -hmm. know, and I think that's uh, I prefer if it's the trick is. Um, to make it a salmon or 13 or whatever, but with a group. Mm -hmm. And the question, the sub question that we could ask why the 4 4 measures is not enough for Corona? Sometimes 4 4 is enough, it's, it's all you need, you know. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's interesting, you know, if you have a salmon, it's, it, it creates this tension, mm -hmm. maybe. What we do a lot is not just sevens, we have like three measures of sevens and the fourth one is a four. Mm -hmm. So it releases the tension, stuff like that. It's more a feeling thing than, than a brain thing for me or for us. Et uh, j'aimerais rajouter que Tommy, he voit la musique aussi avec des phrases musicales. Une phrase elle commence là et elle finit là. Et c'est pas forcément en quatre temps. C'est une question de chez nous tout marche à l'émotion, pas au, à la calculette. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing. You know, sometimes I I show him a new idea and then we have to figure out what it is. You know, like okay, it's seven, then it's thirteen, and it's then he tells me how my brain is fucked up. Mm -hmm. Parce que lui, il sait pas à la base, il sait pas encore bien c'est, il s'en fout. C'est moi, après que où je dois commencer à calculer, à dire, ah oui, c'est assez, et là je commence à trouver des, des, un rythme qui passe sur son riff. Tu vois, donc ça part d'une phrase. Et Jeko, est-ce que difficile parfois de suivre les idées techniques de Tommy Bien sûr, bien sûr, absolument. D'ailleurs, le prochain album pour moi n'est pas facile du tout à jouer. Mm. Yeah. Mais c'est un plaisir, c'est un challenge, hein, encore une fois. Encore une fois, de toute façon, ça a toujours été un challenge pour moi. Mm. Euh, les, les anciens albums sont joués, c'est difficile à jouer, c'est pas, euh, tu vas pas, tu vas pas sur scène en pensant qu'est-ce que tu vas acheter demain pour, pour manger le soir, tu, tu, tu vas être concentré. Yeah. How could you explain that Corona has always remained a trio? Uh, even Celtic Frost was a quartet, uh, Destruction was a quartet, but you stayed a trio. It's cool for the studio, but it's pretty insecure on stage. Do you know what I mean? Insecure? Yeah, because when uh, your um, your uh, I saw uh, uh, at um, in the in the nineties 
a show where uh, your guitar was out of order yeah, then it's and there is no second guitar player to uh, to, to cover to, up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, this then, kind of thing. When when musicians have a technical problem, it's uh, it, it has a, a, a huge impact on the music. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's true. But on the other side, side, I think the the thing is my ego is too big for another guitar player. Mm -hmm. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, it gives me more freedom. You know, if you have two guitar players, that's great too. I like I like it with two guitar players. It's a, it's a wall of sound. You know, when I played with Creator, we had two guitars, of course, and that's a different thing. Um, but when I'm the only guitar player, I have more freedom to to improvise and do so, stuff different every night, and you know. And, I'm very much into like old bands like Van Halen or the Police or Led Zeppelin, they all just had one guitar player. And the modern concert of Corona are much more interesting compared to the past because you have the keyboards and the sampler on stage and it's the same sound uh, compared to the studio album. So it's yes. a, another dimension. Can you talk about this idea to, to put the studio ambience into the stage. Yeah, I think fans deserve to hear it's close to what's in what it is on the album, you know. And um, as we had uh, more samples and stuff to, um, from album to album, it was time that we um, have this live as, as well. I think. Mm -hmm. For me, the biggest difference between Coroner and the other thrash and death metal band, the fact that you don't have forgotten the roots. You have proved it with the cover of the Beatles uh, and the cover of Hendrix. Uh, and can you talk about this, uh, your way of doing death metal, doing death but without forgotten the roots? Can you talk about that mixture? I think the thing is, I mean, I just love music. You know, I, I listen to a lot of different kinds of music and not only metal, you know, that would be way too boring for me. And uh, being open for everything and try to incorporate everything into the songwriting makes this style, I guess. Mm -hmm. And for example, uh, there is the one and only uh, blues death metal of the world, it's no need to be a human. Yes. It's a blues, yeah, and that's right. I yeah. think it's unique in the history of extreme metal. It's blues and it's death metal. And uh, can you do uh, any comments about that particular song? I never saw it like that, but uh, when I think about it, you're totally right. Yeah, it's like this. Uh, deep, and there is a motion, you know, a shuffle thing. Yeah. A shuffle thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We didn't do that on purpose. It was not like. Let's try to do a um, metal, blues, whatever. It just came came out like it is. Never. I think still we don't um, think, okay, if we do a song like this, then maybe we're gonna sell more records. We just um, write what we like ourselves, I guess. Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, comes out what comes out. And, and back to history, for me, 96 was a very sad year for Corona because it was the last two. Uh, how did you decide to stop? Wasn't it possible to go on uh, and, uh, yeah, and to go through the grunge years, you know? Yeah, it was a very hard time for metal, you know, yeah. like the grunge came up and stuff. And um, But the thing is, there was something I... Uh, I don't have anything against grunge, actually I liked it when it came up. It was that new for me because it reminded me of on, on old stuff like Led, Led Zeppelin and things like that. But I think it was just time everybody wanted to do, to try something new, work, work interact with, with other musicians, try different things. It was just time for me and uh, Marky, I guess. When you have returned about, about uh, 2012, uh, there was a huge uh, need for the fans to get your albums on CD, on vinyl, 
and uh, it took uh, 10 years uh, without any corona record in record shops and uh, there were many Russian counterfeits uh, of corona what was your reaction when you saw that uh, people copy your albums and spread it in the market? Yeah, I mean, financially it sucked for us, but on the other hand, you know, it's 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 it's, it's awesome that people listen to stuff we wrote 30 years ago, still like it, and still want to buy that. And, um, I mean, it took the record companies forever to put to make the reissues, and now they're on the market. But uh, if they're not ready, and some guys bootleg it, what can you do? You know. It's the same for Pog Lake of Celtic Frost. It has never never been released, so there are a lot of bootleg copies of that. Yeah, but that, who uh, wants to buy that album? <laughs> 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 Sorry, Tom. <laughs> yeah, and finally, the first pressings of Corona CDs were on Death Cult Records and then on Century Media. Can you talk about the transition of self-production to massive production? Nothing was self-production. We we work with record even death cult records. I remember your first release were uh, uh, available only by your website on death cult records, and in 2018 yeah, there right. was a Century Media remasters. Yeah, I'm confused. There are so many now. Yeah, I I just remember there was a, a fight between record companies and. Um, the rights belong to Universal and Sony bought it and mm -hmm. oh, yeah. stuff like that. What do you think about the cult status of Corona? The legend aspect? I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> I think uh, life is not fair because when you split it up, the people remember that you were a, a, a good band and they realized they needed you when you were dead, you know. You had to return. I think uh, it, should, it should be better to support you in 96. Uh, you have spent 10 years without doing any corona, and that's, uh, uh, that's a shame. Yeah, it's like... Well, a, on the other hand, now, I'm um, surprised how many young people are, are like in the front row of our shows. They've never... You know, they weren't even born when we wrote the music and put it out back then. And, and, uh, and, and they, like on the last show, uh, like a 20 something guy came and he said, Oh, I heard you for the first time. And the, he, he, the guy was from Switzerland, you know, and uh, he was like, You guys blew me away. And then. Can you talk about this tape that was sold at your merch in '96, The Unknown? It has been released only on Night on the Vinyl Dead, only 500 copies, but not uh, massively uh, on CD. Do you plan to release that compilation of rare stuff? Um, it's not planned, but maybe that's a great idea. I don't even remember what's on it. It's some like like movie soundtrack stuff and uh, stuff we. I think we record for many a radio stuff. station. Yeah, ma many many different stuff. Okay. Weird stuff, yeah. right? But uh, it has been bootlegged too, you know? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean. That's life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, you know, we don't make that much music anyway with mm. that stuff. It's uh, something for a small mm. crowd, you know? Mm. Not, uh, and historically, how could you explain that Tom G. Warrior sing on your first demo? and not run? Because the story is like this, um, we didn't, we, we searched for a singer but we couldn't find one, mm -hmm. then Marky asked Tom, mm -hmm. and no, I think he, 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 he asked him to write the lyrics and then we couldn't find a singer and then he also sang and like produced or co-produced it as well. And, um, after that we still couldn't find one and then Ron said, okay, I never heard this kind of vocals before, but it doesn't sound if it's 
that that difficult and and he tried it and mm -hmm. found his own style out of this. Mm -hmm. How does it work between you and Ron that you know since decades as a human being and as a musician? I mean, if, if you know each other for such a long time, you know, you, you respect like everything, like the, the good things, the, the things you don't like that much, whatever it is, you know, and I think we have a huge respect for each other and um, I think that works very well like that. And we talked about Celtic Frost, there is a common story. Uh, it seems that you were the Rodi of the tragic Serenade 2, uh, perhaps in the US. Can you yes. talk about that experience that you did with uh, Marcus? Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah like Tom asks us um, if you want to join him on that US tour mm -hmm. as roadies, and for us it was a great opportunity, you know. So mm -hmm. We just finished that F call demo. And uh, we had the chance uh, to spread the demo over there, you know. When Tom did an interview with, with the magazine, we gave him a, a demo. Mm. That was great. It was also a great experience to see how tour life works, how mm. like the shows with the people, everything. It was great, but it's a common misconception that people think we were the roadies and then we started to play and stuff mm. like that. That's just not true. Mm. Do you still have uh, some friendly contacts with Marcus right now? Yes, totally. Yeah, yeah we are super, mm. super best friends. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the, the story says that he was a little lazy. He didn't want to rehearse so much. What, what is the truth be behind no, that? No, I wouldn't say lazy. It's just that um, other interests and practice the drums, you know, he's a very smart guy and a very interested uh, guy in, in a lot of stuff mm. and uh, just practicing the drums is just too boring for him, I mm. guess. And um, I think he just didn't want to do an, a new album, mm. you know, but sometimes, because it, it's not that difficult, sometimes I... Um, agree with him, you know, with this old thing on your shoulder after that many years to to write some new stuff that should fit the old stuff but still should sound fresh. It's probably easier to make something told in you. He was the main writer of the of the lyrics, right? Yes. And uh, was it difficult to replace him in the, in the new yes. album? <laughs> yeah, very much. Very yes. much. Yes. Mm -hmm. We like tried and tried, uh, tried that yours, uh, ourselves, and now we work together with people. We bring like the the ideas, the mm -hmm. concept, the inputs, but uh, the actual writing um, we do with um, with some good friends. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the new Corona music uh, right now could have happy lyrics? I don't think so. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, life is too too dark to, to write perhaps happy lyrics. I would say we try to um, yeah it's it's dark and sad but with uh, with a mm. with a little bit of hope in it as well. Mm -hmm. La réalité n'est pas joyeuse. Mm. Oui. Where does your nicknames come from? Tommy Baron, Ron Royce, Marky Marky. Yeah, these were not actually nicknames, more like stage names. We um, invented when we had like 10 beers uh, in the rehearsal bunker back in the days. It was more of a joke because it's so obvious that they can be our real names. Um, mm. I think we came up with those names in like five minutes. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. <laughs> and what uh, was your reaction when Stefan Aisha uh, asked you to play with him? Uh, I think that you, you are too much technical for his music. How did you adapt uh, yourself? You know, technical ability is just something you, you don't have to show all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. I think I'm more into... I mean... One of my favorite guitar players is Jeff Beck. He can play one note and, and 
is no can touch me. It's way more interesting. Nowadays, all the young guitar players, they can re play really fast and technical, but if it, if no, not one no touches me, where is the point, you know? And, um, it was actually easy. Sometimes I had to drink a little bit of alcohol before the shows mm. when I played. And is there a Corona album that you don't like so much? No, there's some songs I like more than others, but um, I think uh, every album was was the best we uh, uh, we did in in that time. Mm. You know? okay. I think. Do you have an idea about the number of copies of Corona CD that you have sold worldwide? Altogether, I don't know, but I, I think, I think No More Color or Metal Vortex, one of them sold like uh, eighty thousand times, mm. which would be nowadays a, a lot. Mm. It will, will be like double platinum or something. Mm. It's the kind of information that the record labels don't provide, you know. Uh, they, they keep it yeah, secret. We had some problems with the old uh, record company, but nowadays the record companies, they, they declare every copy, of course. It's mm -hmm. a business they have to do with, it's would be illegal. Mm -hmm. To finish, uh, does the new album has a title yet? Can you reveal the title or is it still a, a secret? Um, there is a title but we're not 100% sure if we're going to change it last minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. If you have a last Hello. message for your French fans. Hey, um, I mean, we always love to play in, in, in France. It's a, a great country with very good food, very good wine, and the, the, we really like the people and fans are always great. And um, thanks a lot for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Thank it you. It was man. very nice. Merci, Diego. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Cool.